Okay, here we go into chapter 16, lesson one on introducing polar coordinates. Don't forget to hand in digitally your tide lab, which now is uh, changed to the daylight lab. Okay, hand in that thing online. Uh, there is some, uh, you guys like Battleship, the game? Okay, you could play Polar Battleship, which we call Galactic Battleship, with a friend if you have any. So, let's do polar coordinates. Okay, here's the difference between rectangular and polar. Up to this point, all of your coordinates in math that you've ever worked with have been rectangular. Right? What do I mean by that? That means to get to this point right here, negative 3, 4, you went so many units to the left, so many units up or down. Right? right and left, up and down, you could get to some point. But how could I get to that same point by extending out to the right or left and then rotating? Here's a polar coordinate. I start at the pole, the center. I rotate out or I extend out a certain distance and I rotate a certain angle. So this is what we call R and this rotation angle is what we call theta. There's two different ways that I can get to any point on any grid. Right? Okay, so what would R be? R would be the radius, which is related to this rectangle over here, and it's 5. It's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Okay, so we're about to take Pythagorean theorem, some inverse trig, and turn it into these polar coordinates. Okay, so as I look at point P, uh, let's take this and call this right here point P. In polar form, I could extend out, it looks like, one, two, three, four units. So R will be four. And theta would be five pi over six. Okay, recall that if you rotate counterclockwise, the angle is positive. What would happen if I would have extended out four and then rotated the opposite way. So I'd have 4 and then my angle would be negative what? 7 pi over 6. Those two are what we call uh, coterminal polar coordinates. Is it possible to extend out to the left first? Sure. What does that change our, our R value to? Negative, right? So if I went out to the left, that would be negative 4, and then rotated this way, what would that coordinate be called? Negative 4 comma what? Close. Negative pi over 6, right? Clockwise is negative, counterclockwise is positive. Okay? All right, that's polar. Now I want to take this for a moment, and I want to look at polar to rectangular. I want to see if this makes sense to you. Okay, could we agree that this point right here in polar form, point P, would be extension of 4, rotation of pi over 4? Agreed? I extend out, I rotate. R is 4, theta is pi over 4, that's pretty much a given. What would the rectangular coordinates of that be? Well, what do I know about this triangle? It's in the first quadrant. I know its radius or hypotenuse is 4. I know that these two angles are both pi over 4. So I got a couple of options here. I could compare it over here to this triangle. What would the sides be on that triangle? Root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So this point right here would be root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. How much larger is this? Four times larger. So if I took each of these values, multiplied it by 4, I could get this. So that'd be 2 root 2. That'd be 2 root 2. So this point, we know in polar form, 
polar form would be 4 comma pi over 4. But in rectangular form, it would be 2 root 2 comma 2 root 2. With the neighbor, um, let's do this. I'll do the first one. How do I know how far out to go from the pole right here? Two, which direction? To the right. One, two. Now I'm going to rotate 240 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise? Counter. Okay, I'm going to go this way until I get to 240. There we are. This right here is the point P. Okay? It wants 1 where r is greater than 0. It wants 1 where r is less than 0. So how could I get to that same spot if r is less than 0? I'd go 1, 2, and then rotate how much? Sixty. You with me? But is it positive or negative? Counterclockwise is positive. So this would be our polar representation if r was less than 0, as you can see. Okay? So there is our positive representation where r is positive. Here is where r is negative. With a neighbor, would you test out, I don't care, two of the next three? Don't count all the way out to 117 for problem number three. Just go out to the very edge of the circle and consider that. Uh, an extension of 117. Okay? Give it a try. Write it in two different forms. We'll come back and look at it. While you're working, I'm going to work through a couple of these. Okay? So if P is negative 4, 7 pi over 6, so I go out 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I rotate 7 pi over 6 from that point, which is a little over pi. So there's the point P. If I change this and turned it into a radius of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, then I only have to rotate pi over 6. There are two representations right there where r is negative and r is positive. For number 3, I'm going to consider 117 all the way out to the edge. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily, we'll have circles labeled for you, these polar coordinates. And then a negative angle of 5 pi over 2 would be one full rotation, that'd be negative 4 pi over 2, and then a, another quarter rotation to right here. Okay, so that would be our point P. Okay, notice that it's rotating in a clockwise manner over one full rotation and then finishes up right there. So along with that, if I were to make this point P have a negative extension, I would go out here and rotate now counterclockwise to that point. So I would rotate a total of pi over 2 radians for that. For the last one, I'm going to go out 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3. And then negative pi over 4, which would take me there. This is my point P. Okay, so negative pi over 4 would be clockwise. So I rotate, or I extend, and then I rotate. Okay, that would be point P. If I were to make it the opposite, I would go out 3, 1, 2, 3, and rotate there 3 pi over 4. Um, hey, this page right here is uh, math jargon for, hey, you could have a positive extension. Let's say, for example, we want this, 3 comma pi over 4. That's a polar coordinate. Okay? If this is a polar coordinate, that puts me here. I extend out 1, 2, 3. I rotate pi over 4. That puts me at this location. All that this page is saying is that I could take 3 and I could add 2 pi to that and I'd end up in the same place. Rot or extend 3, 
rotate one full plus another two pi, right? That's all that that's saying. This right here, the difference between that and that is adding two pi as many times as I want. In this case, I just said k equals one, okay? I could add two pi as many times as I want, whether I go, you know, positive angle or negative angle based on that. All right. Um, so I want to talk generic uh, or general formulas that will help us to go from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. Okay. Uh, we know R is related to X and Y in the following way. We know that X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So R equals X squared plus Y squared. Okay, that's our first important formula. Nothing groundbreaking. That's just straight from algebra, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, how could I write theta in terms of x and y? Well, we know that this is true. Tangent theta equals y over x, right? So then theta equals what? Inverse tangent of y over x. All right, so that's going to be our second formula, which will help us to go from rectangular to polar. Let me show you how that's useful here on the next slide. Okay, so here's a rectangular coordinate. Convert each point in rectangular coordinates given below into polar coordinates, where r is greater than 0 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So where would this thing... This point P be located, which quadrant? Quadrant four, right? Right and then down. Quadrant four, right two, down, two root three. Here's theta, here's R. I'm not sure exactly what they are yet. If you recognize it, you might see it's a special right triangle. If you don't recognize it, there's a way for us to solve this. What did we just say r was equal to? Square root of x squared plus y squared. Looks to me like r would be the square root of 4 plus 4 times 3. Keep with me. If I square 2 root 3, I get 4 times 3. So R looks to be the square root of 16, which means R is 4. So my radius is 4. Well, oh boy. I mean, I'm not good with the unit circle. I don't know about you. I'm not quite sure what theta is. Well, a couple ways to do this. You could use arctan. What would that look like? Well, what's the tangent of theta here? Negative 2 root 3 over 2. Well, that reduces. All right, the 2's reduce. Does that look a little bit better now? Maybe? I see it as negative pi over 3. Maybe you do too, I don't know. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't see that at all, but what you do see is this. That should be a 2, negative 2 root 3. Maybe you see something similar. Right, what would happen? How can I make a 4 into a 1? Divide it by what? Well, that makes this 1 half. That makes this negative root 3 over 2. Oh, now I see it. That's got to be negative pi over 3. You could turn that uh, non-unit non circle triangle into a unit circle triangle and then go from there. However, we're tempted here. We're tempted to say that r equals 4, right? And we're tempted to say that theta equals negative pi over 3, but what's true here? It's got to be between 0 and 2 pi. So where would that be? Here's negative pi over 3. That's not well sketched, but negative pi over 3. What would that be if I rotated, instead of negative, if I rotated positive? Yeah, that'd be 5 pi over 3. 
So it looks like our polar coordinate for this point is 4 comma 5 pi over 3, written in the form that we've been asked for. Okay, um, let's, do, let's do this one together. You're going to laugh once you realize how quick this one is. Where is the point 0 comma 5? This is rectangular, so where would that end up? On the y-axis, right? 0 comma 5. How could I get there? Well, I'd rotate out 5, or excuse me, extend out 5 and rotate how many? Pi over 2. So the polar coordinates for that would be 5 comma pi over 2. Now I'm going to go back and check. Do I meet the requirements here? R is greater than or equal to 0. Check. And uh, theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Check. There's my answer. Okay. Um, number 39. What special right triangle has sides that are equal? 45, 45, 90. I'm in the fourth quadrant, right? 7, negative 7. We know that this is negative pi over 4, but I want my angle to be positive. Correct. So I'm going to have some extension here and then a rotation of 7 pi over 4. Does anybody remember how I get the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90? Take the side and multiply it by root 2. Dang, you guys, if you got the special right uh, properties down, you're done. Like, too easy. Rotate out 7 times the square root of 2. Rotate, excuse me, extend 7 root 2. Rotate 7 pi over 4. Okay, I think that's good for that page. I want to go to one more. If you wanted to play uh, Battleship with your friends, if you have any, you can play on that. That's fun. Oh, fun, fun. But I want to look at maybe one more where we go from polar to rectangular. Uh, let's pick one of these, 17, 18, 19, or 20. Somebody. 19? It's ugly. Okay. Here I go. I'm going to extend. Nate, was that you? Yeah? Okay. Do I extend right or left? Right out to 11. And then do I rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. 7 pi over 6 puts me right about there. Okay, so here's my point P. I'm going to have a triangle there, right, where that angle right there is a pi over 6 angle. Okay, I know my hypotenuse is 11. Okay, so let's sketch this in a larger fashion. I know my hypotenuse is 11. I know this is pi over 6. That makes this side over here what fraction of that? Half, right? Okay, some of you are like, what? Huh? Okay, think of it this way. If this is pi over 6 and that's 1, we said this is 1 half and this is root 3 over 2. How could I make this into 11? I'd multiply by 11. So I'd have to multiply this by 11, and I'd have to multiply this by 11. So it looks like, to me, I get 11 halves, which you could write as 5 and a half if you wanted. And this would be 11 root 3 over 2. But what am I forgetting? Negative. So this point right here has a coordinate left 11 root 3 over 2, up 11 halves. All right, so Marky Mark and the Wahlburgers here on 36. Okay, let's consider the angle uh, in a moment, but we're going to extend out 13. So out here to 13, and then we're going to rotate an angle that has, right, draw a triangle, an opposite side of 12 and an adjacent side of 5. Ha! Too easy. That point is 5, comma, 12. Done. Yeah. Because isn't, isn't this length going to be the same as that length? Yeah, so that's 13. Does 5 squared plus 12 squared equal 13 squared? Yeah, it's a Pythagorean triple. Like, subscribe, comment below. $10 to the next sub to GNC Gains. Maybe $11.
giveaways are not useless. No, 